In our previous program with you, we spoke of the basic foundational role in the spiritual life played by the remembrance of God, how that is a basic necessity for every Christian to have the remembrance of God, God before their eyes throughout their life and every day. And without a doubt, one of the great threats to the Christian life is the secularization of society where the remembrance of God is banished and people pass their days without any reference, without any sign or symbol before them, which will bring them back to remembrance and prayer to God. And it is no small thing, and one more characteristic and sign of the life of Christ, when all of life uh, from, is, is, is baptized, is immersed in this remembrance of God. One of the characteristics of the Christian civilization and the church is that every city and every village and every church and every house and every person is dedicated to God uh, through and in the name of one of God's holy ones. So each person has a patron saint and that saint intercedes for them and they have a special relationship with that holy person and a special love for them. Well, every city also has and should have and can have in the Christian, Orthodox Christian world, a saint which protects and which stands as a model and a point of reference for the whole city. I'm standing here before the Holy Basilica of St. Demetrios, the heart of Thessaloniki. It's this saint and this church which is the soul of Thessaloniki. This saint has been the protector of this city for over 1,500 years. From the 5th century, when the first basilica, the first church of St. Demetrius was built, parts of which remain to this day, we can see in this church here, mosaics, beautiful, phenomenal works of art. From the 5th century, from the 6th century, from the 7th century, have remained on the walls of this temple. Although it's been burned down and destroyed over the centuries, two, three, four times, partially destroyed, I should say, those have remained, as have the crypt down below, as have the relics of St. Demetrius, as we'll see when we enter in just a moment. But it is this temple and this saint which stands at the heart and soul of Thessaloniki. And it is no small thing to have such a protector and at the center of your city to have such a, a church and such a tradition and such a history. Something that, without a doubt, over time, people take for granted. But when you don't have that, when you grow up in a city that has no reference to anything holy, it's not dedicated to any holy one of God or to God himself through one of the saints, then one can feel the missing presence of God. It's one more thing which distances us from God and God's presence and his, his holy ones, which are examples and also our intercessors before God. So as we stand here, there's beautiful basilica which is built over the relics of the saint where he was martyred and contains so many other relics and so many other holy objects and so many icons painted throughout the centuries we're just overwhelmed by the continuity of the faith the diachronic presence of God in, in, the, in his holy temple so we're going to go inside now and we're going to take a verbal tour of the temple and that will give us an opportunity also to go deeper into the life of the saint and the life of Christ as is loved out in this temple. Just a few decades after the martyrdom of St. Demetrius, Christians built a temple over his tomb where his relics were preserved and treasured. And for decades after that, Christians worshipped there. And this is where the prefect of the city, Leon Dios, came around 413 
and was healed as many many others were and many came to the myrrh gushing relics of Saint Demetrius was healed completely of his disease that he was suffering from at the time and in gratitude to the saint he built the church that we are now standing in of course which has gone through many changes over the centuries but the basic foundation and the pillars these massive columns that we're standing between right now uh, are those which this Leon Dios built in 413 and that church more or less was preserved intact with various changes especially to the roof which burned several times because it was made out of wood that church remained until 1917 at which time the whole city of Thessaloniki had a massive fire and once again the portions of of the temple of St. Demetrius were burned down now this basil the basilica of St. Demetrius is divided into five different columns there's two on the left and two on the right and one massive uh, down the middle massive aisle I should say down the middle and at the end of which we can see the Platitera, the mother of God with Christ the angels on left and right the holy prophets all around the icon of the Annunciation above and the great hierarchs of the church below on left and right as is customary in Orthodox churches beautiful marble work and fantastic columns with carvings in the in marble and in stone dating back to the Emperor Justinian and in the 6th and 7th century line this main aisle which lead to the sanctuary and on our left we can see the tomb that were rather the reliquary of Saint Demetrios where every year on his feast day those relics are taken out in procession throughout the whole city and people come from all over Greece for this massive celebration several days all week really the church is filled with pilgrims liturgy is served every day and the relics are venerated and the holy relics at that time especially on his feast day gush forth myrrh and that myrrh is distributed to thousands of pilgrims who come from all over as far away as Bulgaria and Romania for the feast of Saint Demetrius now below the sanctuary we are going to go down in just a moment to the crypt where the saint was martyred where the well because this was a bath at that time he was kept in this place until his martyrdom there's a well on the left side there's the uh, bath down below and um, we can see this third fourth century Roman uh, monument which has been preserved to this day underneath the sanctuary and we'll take a tour of that and we're also going to go over and venerate the relics throughout the whole temple icons new and old as I said mosaics dating back to the 5th 6th and 7th century uh, of Saint Demetrio Saint Nestor who was also martyred at the same time with Saint and uh, Lupus who was uh, the one who uh, was a venerator of the Saint and um, protected his holy relics and uh, one is just overcome not so much by the massiveness of the temple it is the largest uh reported to be the largest church in greece to this day even though there have been very large temples built ever since it's one of the largest temples in greece one is not overcome so much by the massiveness but one is overcome by the subtle understated beauty the fine work the sense of beauty in every piece of marble, stone, paint, and wood that decorates the temple. Now standing before the holy relics of the saint, we see this beautiful carved marble reliquary you can enter in at least eight nine feet high totally filled with icons of the saint his martyrdom his life in the middle are the holy relics on the top of the, is the holy skull of the saint and 
one can when they put their nose and their face on the holy relics, smell the wonderful scent of myrrh that this relics continually let off. And one is overcome by the presence of the saint, the humble, loving devotion of the saint, the meekness of the saint. This is not a flashy saint. It's not a televised event. This is a mysterious, for us, mysterious presence, one that surpasses all understanding like the love of God and brings us into the presence of God. And here these relics become the focus of the city on the feast day, as we said. They've been the focus of Christian veneration, as we said, for 1,500 years. Because in the relics, the Holy Spirit dwells, works, manifests its power for the sake of our salvation. That's why we venerate these relics. We don't venerate flesh and blood alone. We don't venerate bones alone. But we venerate the presence of God in these holy relics. We venerate the Incarnation. We rejoice in the fullness of the Incarnation. We rejoice in the power of the Incarnation. It is not limited to our rational intellect. It's not limited to an idea or an ideology or a teaching. But it is total, complete, penetrates our very body, saves the whole man. This is all right here in these holy relics. This is the celebration of the Incarnation. This is the victory over death. It is symbolic and real because it shows, it points to, and it is the presence of another reality, one that is not seen or heard or understand by people who are not struggling to love the truth but it is seen and understood and heard by those initiated through their love of God into the mystery of the Incarnation, into the presence and the reality of the Incarnation. So here we are before these holy relics, 15, 1600 years now. These holy relics have been treasured by the Christians. Who can speak of such a tradition, such a presence, such a continuity? It is truly a witness to the God of history and a witness to his presence in history. It is a great, great blessing for the city of Thessaloniki. We're standing about 15 feet below the holy altar in the place of martyrdom of the saint in the Roman baths. We're surrounded by marble work and stone work and uh, walls that date back 1,700 years. And it's in this place that uh, the Christians have come and venerated the martyrdom of the saint. And uh, for, for all this time, it was above this that the church was built. And uh, in, in, in around 313, It's also, to this day, a place of worship for the Christians. Uh, here, every Friday night, um, there's a divine liturgy served, and a, v a vigil served, I should say, where many young people especially come and uh, partake of the holy mysteries and worship uh, the Holy Trinity. Now, uh, the life of St. Demetrius, which we've not spoken about, is, we'll speak here in brief, is really uh, unique and yet common among the great ancient martyrs. He was well known in the city. He was revered for his virtues. He was a part of the establishment, a part of nobility. His father and mother, Christians, but, but were also well established in the nobility. And uh, he was uh, well liked. And uh, he was, uh, because of his virtues, quite, of quite uh, service to the pagan Roman emperors, but uh, he was also, uh, besides being uh, a great worshiper of the one God, he was a missionary, 
and he gathered children especially around him and taught them the faith and had quite a following and converted many pagans to the uh, to the way to the life of Christ well when the Emperor Galerius was returning from the east after victories and made a stop at Thessaloniki pagans went and denounced the saint and asked for his martyrdom and uh, of course the Emperor was very sad because he knew that he was a faithful servant uh, in matters of government but nonetheless called him and uh, uh, questioned him to learn and learned that in fact he was a Christian and he did worship the one God in Trinity and he would denounce the pagan idols and uh, the Emperor immediately imprisoned him when the Christians learned of his imprisonment one uh, in particular Christian came his name was Nestor and he came running to St. Demetrius at that time uh, the Emperor had uh, as he did in most cities that he, he visited he called for games and he had one particular favorite in Thessaloniki who was uh, a great warrior and won victory over most of all his contests and um, his name was Lieas. Now Lieas was uh, a favorite of the emperor, as I said, and Nestor came and begged St. Demetrius that he might be martyred for Christ in the battle with Lieas and show the power of God in battling, just like the ancient battle of David and Goliath. Nestor wanted to take on the giant and be vic victorious and show that the God of the Christians was more powerful. And he asked for the blessing of St. Demetrius. St. Demetrius gave him his blessing, and he went and he did, in fact, defeat Lies and uh, was quickly martyred uh, for this show of strength of the Christians. And so Nestor is also venerated in his temple as a close associate with St. Demetrius. Uh, after this, uh, not long after the martyrdom of Nestor, Galerius had learned that it was in fact St. Demetrius that had blessed Nestor to go and to fight and who had defeated Lias. And when he learned this, he was very upset and he declared that whoever loves me should go and kill Demetrius. And so immediately soldiers were sent and uh, St. Demetrius, knowing that his time had come, the martyrdom had come, lifted up his hands and the soldiers pierced his body with their swords and their spears and St. Demetrius became a great offering to God, his love for God. But it's not just the life of St. Demetrius that is worthy of great respect and admiration and veneration, but it is the continuing presence of the saint, because we know that God is the God of the living, and not the dead, and that his holy ones are with him. And it is by God's providence that throughout all these centuries, the saint himself has interceded, has appeared to the people of Thessaloniki, has defended the city again and again in times of famine as we have many stories of the saint interceding with ship captains to divert their load of wheat to the city in times of famine as it did before the fall of Constantinople or as a warning to the people of Thessaloniki also before the fall of Thessaloniki to the Turks when he appeared and warned that the laxity of life and distance from the life of Christ of the people and their sins would soon bring the fall of the city to the Turks and he was weeping for the people of Thessaloniki that they had not followed the commandments and this would be their reward and he could do nothing that this was the will of God and this was a warning in a way pointing to the reason for the fall of Thessaloniki to the Turks he also appeared numerous times since then on the walls of the city, defending the city from its enemies in the ancient and modern world and warning the people. 
and time of the great earthquake, even 30 years ago, the 1970s, people reported St. Demetrius appearing on the walls of the city on his horse in his soldier's armor. And so whether it be in visions or whether it be with miracles or whether it be with gushing relics, St. Demetrius' presence in this temple and in this city is very much felt and is all by the providence of God. It's all God working behind and through his saint for the sake of his people because God is in his saints. God is in his holy place and his holy place, his temple, are those who love him. And God wants his presence to be felt among the Christians. So we started out this program by talking about the importance of having a patron for the city, how much that helps one remember God throughout the day, seeing the Holy Temple, having the feast days, and all of the miraculous and wondrous deeds of the saint. All these things are of tremendous value for the life in Christ. And when we downplay them, or when we fall into a mistaken understanding of the Christian life, in very narrow terms and rationalistic terms, me and my way, my life, my Bible, or my particular interpretation, or whatever it might be, when things are narrowed, and God is in all his wondrous ways, in all the providential ways that he appears to us and makes his presence felt, if he is not allowed or he is banished because of mistaken understandings or because of a lack of love of God, for whether it be for each of us separately or for cities entirely, this is a great loss. One might take uh, inspiration from St. Demetrios in Thessaloniki for his city or her city or her country or town and dedicate, give preference and love to a particular saint and call upon them. America has such saints, St. Herman of Alaska, St. Innocent, St. John Maximovich, St. Nikolai, and all the others, St. Peter the Aleut. And all of these saints should be close to us in America. And we should run to them and call upon them. And God will work through them, and his presence will be felt, uh, just as it has been in this temple and in this city for over 1,500 years. Until next time, may God, our loving triune God, through the prayers of St. Demetrius, the wonder worker, and Murgasher of Thessaloniki, protect, keep, and save us.